This Week in IT, Microsoft announces new features coming to OneDrive at its event this week, including AI-powered search for everyone and new features coming to Microsoft 365 Copilot subscribers. So stay tuned as I unpack all the latest news. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure and Microsoft 365. Before we get started, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 72% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 9,000 subscribers and I'd love it if we could push that up to 9,100 this week. So if you'd like to see this kind of weekly news roundup from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Microsoft held an event this week for OneDrive announcing a whole load of new features that are either just about to be generally available or will be available at some point in the very near future. Now, reading the blog post, you wouldn't think that there was a huge deal around this. There are lots of things that kind of we already maybe knew about before or have just become generally available. But if you actually sat down and watched the event, there are a whole load of details there that were missed out of the blog post that were really important. So I want to unpack all of that information in today's video so that we all know what is really coming. So probably the most interesting feature that's going to become available for everyone is the OneDrive, much like as we discussed last week, that's coming to Windows Copilot Plus PCs. OneDrive is getting AI powered search. Now, of course, you know, we all understand what fuzzy search is. So it's if you, you know, don't spell something quite correctly, it will still try to find what it is that you're actually looking for. But AI powered search goes a step further. So for instance, if you were looking for files that had images of a brown dog, you could type all of that out in natural language, and then it would interpret that, try to understand what it is that you're really looking for and then surface those results for you. Now, as I mentioned last week, search is one of the things that we all do a lot. Trying to find the actual documents that we need to be working with isn't always easy. And this is another step forward to try and make that easier. And I'm glad they're bringing this feature for everybody because this kind of natural language search is actually part of Copilot as well. But you have to pay to subscribe for those features. They're bringing this for everybody and Copilot still has that, but Copilot is more sophisticated in that you can go on to, of course, ask it very specific questions about the content and do all sorts of other things that are not necessarily part of this AI powered search feature. But that is coming soon to OneDrive users. OneDrive is getting a refreshed mobile app. It's coming to Android first and then to iPhone. Microsoft really highlighted that this is primarily about photos and giving users and mainly consumers, of course, a better experience with photos on their devices and that you'll be able to now import photos into OneDrive from Google and from Dropbox. In some effort to make the OneDrive experience more consistent across Windows and Microsoft 365, Microsoft is bringing a new OneDrive gateway to the desktop Office apps. So when you go to save a document or to open a document, you will get a, an experience there that looks much like the OneDrive client if you were to use it in the browser, for instance. And this is really about making a more consistent experience across the different applications. Now, we've just had the release of Windows 11 24H2, but Microsoft is already talking about what's coming to Windows 11 next year. And they're saying that by mid-2025, they're going to update the built-in File Explorer experience again to make it a little bit more consistent with what you get in the OneDrive client on the web. So they're going to be adding support for colored folders and they're going to be improving some of the existing features like making a unified favorites list and access to more shared items and activity updates. Here's a little nugget of news that seemed to really fly under the radar, but SharePoint document libraries are getting the biggest upgrade that they've seen in a decade. So we're moving away from the classic 
specific file list that you get today and then moving it over to what you see in OneDrive. So essentially SharePoint document libraries are getting that fully fledged OneDrive file experience, bringing all of that goodness that Microsoft has been adding over the last couple of years. So you'll be able to create custom views and get access to all the kind of search filtering and all that goodness that we're used to seeing in OneDrive. Microsoft also announced at this event that OneDrive now has offline access. So they've been talking about that for some time. So I don't know if they mean, well, that's now generally available. So they're saying that if you don't have internet access or you have intermittent access, you can still view and organize your files until you get back with an internet connection. I haven't tried this myself, so I'd love to know if you have any experience with that. If you're a Microsoft 365 Copilot uh, subscriber, Copilot is now generally available in OneDrive. So you can do things like summarize files, you can compare up to five files, and you can ask Copilot questions. And you can find specific files using natural language. Microsoft also announced a few new Copilot features that will be coming soon to subscribers. So the first thing is they announced a catch up feature. And this will essentially show you all files where there has been some activity that Copilot thinks is relevant to you. So maybe some comments, maybe some updates, maybe your name was mentioned. So it's just an easy way to get an overview of what you should be paying attention to as a priority. They also said that it'll be soon possible to do a Q&A on recordings of meetings. So you'll be able to ask questions about what happened in a meeting and not just view the transcription. I thought this feature was a little bit clunky. You'll be able to now convert Copilot responses into Word documents. And once you've done that, of course, you can then share it with anybody who needs it. That's a way of essentially quickly adding in a share, you know, share the responses feature. Feels a little bit clunky, but I guess it will do for now. They also mentioned that you'll be able to perform a Q&A on images and a new feature that will allow you to essentially convert Word documents into PowerPoint presentations. So their use case was, well, if you feel that information in the Word document doesn't quite do it, and you think that PowerPoint would have more impact, for instance, then you can use AI to automatically make that transition of that material to PowerPoint. All of this, of course, is welcome, especially the updates coming for Copilot. One of the things I think they really ought to concentrate on is consistency across these experiences. Obviously, Microsoft has the telemetry to show potentially maybe that more people use OneDrive in the web interface than in File Explorer on Windows. I don't know whether that's really the case or not. For me, all of these updates to the OneDrive web application are all very well, but I never use it or very rarely use it. So I'd like to see a lot of this stuff coming into File Explorer. Obviously, Microsoft has made a commitment with this announcement to say some of these things are coming into File Explorer, like you know, uh, more uh, activity information on files, a unified favorites and the, the colored folders and all the rest of it. But I'd still like to see something a bit more unified. And when you go to office.com, I'd like to see the file access list that you have there really be just the same, exactly the same as what you see in OneDrive. I don't think there should be a different experience. IT professionals were not left out. Let's start with some of the, what well, I think is probably one of the most important uh, announcements that they made. There's now going to be a new policy. It's called a restricted content discoverability policy that will essentially allow you to exclude SharePoint sites from Copilot. So Copilot will not be allowed to use the data in those sites. So if you have some very sensitive information that you want to make sure is excluded, you are now going to be able to do that. I think that was a big concern for many organizations that end users would accidentally be able to discover information, I don't know, some very sensitive financial information, for instance, that they ought not to have access to. And this gives organizations an extra control to make them feel more confident that that is not going to happen. So I think that's really important. Earlier this year, Microsoft announced Microsoft 365 archiving, and they're expanding the capability now that you will be able to archive in 
individual files. You'll also be able to give users the ability to manually choose files to archive if you want to let them do that. And also set up policies for automatic archiving. I think it was last year that Microsoft introduced the OneDrive Sync Health Report. So this is about the Sync client on end users PCs and whether there are any issues for them syncing files backwards and forwards. This week, Microsoft announced that they're adding support for the Microsoft Graph Data Connect. So you'll essentially be able to export the information from that Sync uh, Data Health Report into Power BI or into Excel and just manipulate it and work with it in different ways. Another thing that Microsoft announced, which I think is going to be really useful for IT administrators, is a site policy comparison report. Now, the idea of this is that you create a policy for a SharePoint site. All the settings that you would like to have there and then you can compare that policy how it's configured with all the sites across your SharePoint tenant and then look for any gaps in the configuration so it's really a tool that's designed to help you ensure that all of your sites meet particular policy standards that you want to set and of course if you've got hundreds thousands of, of these things then it can be a real problem to do that manually. So this is a little bit of automation that's designed to help IT professionals make sure that all of their SharePoint data is properly secured. At the end of this week's event, Microsoft kind of left it as a bit of a, an afterthought, I think, and they started talking about automation. It didn't really seem to deserve a, a section of its own. And to be honest, the demonstration that they gave left me a little bit uh, puzzled. It didn't seem very impressive or especially useful maybe I missed something maybe this is all much more sophisticated they just were just not showing it I'm not quite sure but essentially they're going to be allowing users to create copilot agents in 2025 allowing end users or IT professionals of course to build custom AI assistance and automate repetitive tasks they didn't really demonstrate this very much uh, the, the company says that these agents are going to work across OneDrive, you know, Teams, SharePoint and other platforms, but they can be built by users and the point of them is that they can be shared and reused. So once you've built one, then you can, you know, use it for multiple different things if you like. They said that it can be transformed into a powerful and intelligent AI assistant. The demo they gave didn't seem to really offer much value <laughs> as far as I could see. I mean, you know, you could just do what they showed with Copilot as it stands. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes, because I think, you know, creating workflows, creating these intelligent assistants is going to be where Copilot and AI really comes into its own over the coming years as artificial intelligence starts to mature. Let me know in the comments below how relevant you think these updates to the OneDrive app are. Are your users using OneDrive in a browser or are they mainly sticking to working with files that are synced to their devices and the desktop apps? I'd love to know how relevant you think these changes really are and how useful they will be to you. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like because it helps us to grow the channel and get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave another video on the screen now about the Windows 11 24 H2 update, everything that you need to know about that, how to get it and when it might be automatically delivered to you if you're not managing your updates. But that's it from me this week and I'll see you next time.